My name is Mark Trexler. I'm with the Climatographers, a climate risk consulting firm. I've spent the last 28 years working on climate change issues in, in a wide variety of capacities, and currently I'm focused on the question of how do you think about, communicate, implement climate risk strategies. When, when we think about climate risk and business risk, we, we really have a disconnect because business risk tends to be thinking anywhere from three months to two years out into the future. You know, five years is long-term planning for most business risk management. And businesses have enterprise risk management, they have operational risk management, continuity risk management, supply chain risk management, all sorts of sort of risk management frames that businesses use. But they're all short-term. Very little thinking goes on, you know, two years, three years, five years. Virtually no thinking goes on 10 years, 15, 20 years out. And so when we think about climate risk, the tools that we normally use for business risk analysis just don't really work because climate risk, you can't talk about climate risk in a three month, one year, two year time frame. Climate risk by definition is, is sure, there's a current aspect to it and there's a near term aspect to it. But you have to be thinking midterm and long term when it comes to, to climate risk and those just aren't the kinds of risk tools and it's not the kind of risk thinking that businesses are used to using. When I've worked with companies on, on risk issues, what I found over the years is that scenario planning and thinking about risk scenarios around climate risk is, is really the most effective way to help companies engage on this issue. Because you know, for operational risk, they know what the risks potentially are. Or for, for supply chain risk, there's a storm and suddenly they can't get what they need to their distributors or something like that. They, they know what they're trying to manage from a risk perspective. When it comes to climate change and sort of a longer term risk issue, what that means is that you're introducing a lot more uncertainty into the question of, well, what exactly is it that we're trying to prepare for? And when you get you know, two years, three years, five years, 10 years out into the future, that uncertainty basically magnifies. It expands, expands, expands. And so you really have to start thinking about, well, what is the scenario that we have in mind for climate risk, for climate change, for climate policy? What is the scenario that we want to manage risk for, that we want to be hedged against in terms of what we do today to control our risk under alternative future scenarios? And that, that's why scenario planning is so important when it comes to climate risk at a business level. And scenario planning is something that most companies don't really do. Uh, some do, some sectors do, certainly. But most companies don't do it, and many companies that do scenario planning don't really do it the way you need to do it to manage a topic like climate risk. When we think about scenario planning, one of the interesting problems we have is that for, for humans, it's very difficult to think about futures that are that are very different from the present. We, we just inherently tend to extrapolate the, fu the, the current situation and our current circumstances into the future. It's just the way our minds work. When it comes to scenario planning, where you're consciously trying to, to deal with uncertainty and consciously trying to make sure you're covering your bases given alternative outcomes, you can't trust that simple extrapolation of the present into the future. I mean, just for an example, when, when oil is, is $25 a barrel, and was years ago, the idea that it would get to $120 a barrel was just nonsensical. I mean, that was ridiculous. When oil was $125 a barrel, the idea it would go back to 20 was just nonsensical. It was ridiculous, and, and nobody thought that way. When we're thinking about climate risk and thinking about future scenarios, especially if we're looking 5, 10, 15 years out, things can shift pretty dramatically. The public perceptions can shift, public policies can shift, the climate itself can shift in various ways with, with sort of relatively sudden shifts. And so that's why scenario planning becomes so important and you need to sort of define what those scenarios are 
and bound your risks through scenario planning. Uh, you can't trust yourself to just think about the future and come up with the right future because that's just not the way our minds work. That's what scenario planning is so valuable for. It forces you to open up your mind and to think about the future in a different way and that's critical to climate risk management. Well, it's certainly the case that, that the companies thinking about climate risk tend to be the larger corporations because they have the people, they have the departments, they have strategic planners, they have a risk officer. Uh, they're in a much better position to think about climate risk issues. Smaller companies aren't. I mean, smaller companies just don't have those people, and so they tend not to be thinking about climate risk in, in at all the same way that a big company does. The problem is, is that small companies are much more fragile. And so, in many respects, small companies are much more sensitive to some of the climate risks that we're talking about in terms of climate-inspired extreme events, trends that, that really influence their supply chains. Small companies often cannot recover from even a modest supply chain disruption. So if you have even a modest supply chain interruption, a particularly violent storm or, or something else from, that, that might be influenced, worsened, whatever, by climate change, small companies are simply a lot more vulnerable to those events. But they're also the companies that just aren't thinking about climate risk and, and how climate risk might present itself. They're also more vulnerable to a lot of the potential policy measures that might come out. I mean, if we get significant carbon pricing at some point, small companies are, are not going to be anywhere near as well prepared or able to adapt as larger companies. So, so sure, it's much harder for smaller companies to grapple with this issue, but in many respects, they're a lot more vulnerable to the problem. When we think about corporate climate risk, one of the interesting things is that it's really hard to know or to pinpoint in advance where the interest is coming from, or the direction is coming from, or the leadership is coming from within a company. To date, it's mostly, it's often come from the CEO. It comes from you know, the CEO being exposed to, to an idea or what his colleagues or her colleagues are thinking about. So it comes from the top down. Uh, because there is no mandate still to really consider climate risk. In, in, most, in most respects. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about it, but it's really not factored into the official risk management structures of companies. Some companies, it's the board of directors that have a risk committee, and that's sort of where it sits. In other cases, it might be the, the head of the environment department or the, the, the environmental health and safety department because there's no place else to put it, or the chief sustainability officer or any, any number of places it might sit in terms of climate risk management. The problem there is that climate risk is one of those issues that, that has to engage the company as a whole. You can't just send one person off to think about climate risk, develop a strategy, implement that strategy. That's not what climate risk is about. So you have to have the CFO involved. You have to have the, the supply chain people involved. You, you really have to have the company involved. And that makes it a lot more complicated, more difficult, and unless you're careful, a lot more expensive to, to do. And, and so that's one of the real barriers to, as to why we don't see more sort of effective climate risk management within a lot of companies. When we think about risk, risk and opportunity really are the flip side of the same coin. So there's a lot of argument out there as to, you know, is this a risk? Is this an opportunity? Should we be presenting it as a risk? Should we be presenting it as an opportunity? And you, you don't have to have that argument in the sense that for, for some companies, this is obviously much more of a risk than an opportunity. For some companies, this is obviously much more of an opportunity than a risk. For a lot of companies, risk and opportunity are almost hard to separate from each other. Because if you manage the risk, that becomes an opportunity. So you know, in, in some ways, it's, it's a pointless discussion to have if you're, if you're thinking about risk and opportunity the right way. You know, in some cases, it might be developing a technology that you might not otherwise have decided to develop 
but thinking about it from a climate perspective and how markets are likely to evolve, low carbon transition markets, et cetera, there's a, going to be a bigger market for that technology than would otherwise have been the case. So developing that new technology is a, a, an economic opportunity, but is also hedging your risk on, on other technologies that you might have. So this, this whole risk opportunity debate uh, and you should never talk about risk, you should only present it as an opportunity, or vice versa, is just not very helpful. 